Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? As we get deeper into the holiday season, I kind of have had the taste to get some holiday horror, you know? Maybe a little Jack Frost. Remember everybody saw that in the movie stores? Whenever you walk by, it'd make the scary face. I remember I would go down Hollywood video and I'd walk by the aisle and I'd be like, uh -huh. and I'd like kind of run off. I, an instant classic is Krampus and maybe even, uh, what's the one with, it's not Hulk Hogan, is it Goldberg? Silent Night, Deadly Night? Or is it just Deadly Night? Whatever, he plays, it has one of the best intros ever in the rest of the movie is, eh, you know, whatever. But those all kind of came to mind until earlier this year, I came across something called the mean one. I think I saw this like maybe a month after the Winnie the Pooh movie came out and it's a Grinch horror film. <sighs> Ah, God, why? Earlier this year, we were doing a lot of horror movie reviews and stuff, but I could not find it to save the life of me. Wasn't on any streaming platforms, couldn't find it anywhere online, but luckily, I was able to receive a copy from a source. I don't know which source it was. I won't tell on the person that gave me said video, but I was able to see it. Finally, we were able to watch The Mean One, which is essentially, if I had to give you an upfront idea of what The Mean One is, I would say it's like they tried to do Jim Carrey's Grinch as a horror film, but they also wanted to just kind of do the plot of Willy's Wonderland is kind of the idea. It, it's the worst movie I've seen this year, I'll say that. It's not the worst movie ever. We're not going to go that far, but it is by far the worst movie this year, which this, this year has been stacked. Right, Nick? Oh, yeah. This is one of the worst horror films I've personally ever seen. This, unironically, might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's also one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. This year has been fucking stacked. I mean, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the Paul Bunyan horror film, Children of the Corn remake, holy shit. The Little Mermaid. I would honestly say that the AI-generated Little Mermaid movie was more enjoyable than this. But without further ado, obviously spoiler warnings in case any of you are deranged enough to put this on during your holiday festivities. Don't want to ruin this one for you. But without further ado, I had to watch it, so now you have to listen about it. Let's chat about the mean one. Okay. This movie starts off, and throughout the whole movie, there's like a narrator, which I'm pretty sure they're taking that from the cartoon. Well, I guess it's also in the Jim Carrey Grinch movie too, right? There's a narrator the whole time. It's In this context, it doesn't work at all. It's always kind of random, and you're like, oh shit, why the fuck are we doing that? But I digress, whatever. It starts off, and we get the classic scene of Sydney Lou Who, but in this movie, they call it Sydney You Know Who. Remember that story about Cindy you know who? And you're like, okay, I immediately know what kind of fucking movie this is gonna be. As soon as they start introducing like, I mean, it's the name, but it's slightly different, okay? So it's like trying to be cute. And that's another thing with this movie before I go too much into it is I don't know how intentional the comedy is supposed to be. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, it's like, obviously it's supposed, they're trying to treat it as serious as they can with a horror movie. And it feels like they're doing that here too, but there's so many intentional, haha, this is supposed to be cute funny that I didn't know if like, oh, are other parts of this movie supposed to be a comedy or? a horror. I, I don't I don't know, but it was bad. It wasn't funny and it wasn't scary. So I don't know. So it starts off with Sydney meeting the Grinch at the beginning, and they kind of establish that this is going to be a different version of the classic tale. It starts off with Sydney giving the Grinch a, or as she calls him, Santa, like a Santa Claus necklace, and his heart grew three sizes too big. But time stops, and then the narrator's like, well, that's probably the story you remember, but it's actually far darker. But what if I said that's not how it went down? And we get a nice cut of the mom immediately coming coming in and just being like, Sydney, watch out, that's a monster. The mom and the Grinch get into a scuffle, a scaff as you were. The mom trips, falls onto a spike. The actress they had for Sydney lets out a very monotone, monster! 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 That's the beginning of our movie. Until we cut to the future, apparently, and Sydney and her dad are driving back to town to just enjoy the holiday season, even though it's like your mom was mur grisly murdered during the holiday. It's just, it was, it, it, I, it's very odd. And we get a lot of weird dynamics between Sydney and her dad. I mean, he's like really, really over the top. And there is a funny line where uh, as they're driving up, Sydney and her dad are singing and like they're laughing because they finished a song because apparently that's funny. And she lets out a sigh and the dad. Immediately says, are, are you okay? Because I can turn around right now. You're gonna be okay? 
because we can turn around right now. Which, don't really know what elicited that response, but she's like, nah, it's fine, it's whatever. And then this is where we start getting, okay, now we're getting into extremely schlocky, low budget, new, like, bad director kind of filmmaker vibes when there's some shots that are snowy, and then there's some shots that are like, this is just Southern California or Northern California. I want to say that their home is probably in Northern California. That's kind of what it feels like. But while they're driving, they get pulled over by a cop who is absolutely rock hard for Sydney. He's, I mean, he is flustered. He's like, <laughs> what's your name? And she's like, oh God, dad. And the dad's like, I wish you would get in here and fuck my daughter. Would you come, would you climb through this window and fuck my daughter? She's like, ah, dad. She looks at the cop and she's like, if I skinned my dad alive and cut off his cock and killed him and shot him in the back of the head, would you help me with that? And he's like, huh, well, I I'm sorry, I gotta go. And the cop just leaves. We started to notice that during this interaction, the movie is like extremely quiet. I'm Cindy. abnormally quiet like there's no real score behind it there's no sound effects no like let's let's take this right here if you had this be absolutely quiet it wouldn't feel like a you know a live room versus if i wanted to make it feel more cinematic i might put in room noise like this oh. and now it feels kind of like a full space it doesn't feel like i'm just like staring into the void and my ears are just like are we dying is this what death is is this is this what it feels like to die because that's how it felt watching this movie a bit I it was so silent i felt like i could hear my brain just fossilizing inside of my head but sydney and her dad arrive back to the house and you know this is the place that her mom got killed it's a very sensitive subject she immediately walks in Side, we get an obvious jump scare of some bats coming out of a chimney. The dad immediately comes in, he's like, what's wrong? The next scene, Sydney has a nightmare of her getting choked for a split second. She screams again, the dad immediately sprints in. What's wrong? Except this time he's holding a bat. And in this part where he's like trying to like console her and he's like, oh, it's okay. The actor to the actress was just extremely kissy. Like to the point where I'm like, maybe if it was like your younger daughter and you're trying to be affectionate, you'd be like, it's okay. And like kiss her head, you know, and do whatever. He kisses her head, her hand, and then her shoulder. At one point, I'm like, am I am I on the hub? <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is the beginning of like an intro to the hub. If you know what I'm talking about. They go into the coffee shop the next day where they're sitting down. We get introduced to the mayor, who her name is Mayor McBean, which is coincidental because I was like, isn't that the, the name of a Dr. Seuss character? And we were like, oh yeah, well that's probably a coincidence. But it gets so much worse. Essentially, the handsome sheriff that Sydney wants to fuck is there as well. He comes up. There's a guy that they've obviously like a younger actor that they've tried to age. He kind of looks like Negan from The Walking Dead. He comes up and she's like, oh, hi, Sheriff. And he's like, you remember me? And we get a nice quick flashback of uh, Sydney as a little girl trying to show the Sheriff a drawing she did, which is just a picture of the Grinch. And uh, he's like, well, we found this outside and it's a green ski mask. And he's like, so I'm gonna need you to be a brave girl and draw what he actually looked like under the mask because monsters aren't real, right? And she's like, sure. He's like, okay, sweetheart, I'm gonna really need you to say monsters aren't real. Can you do that? Are you a big girl? Can you do that? And she's like, yeah. Yes. He's like, no, sweetie, please. I need you to say it. Please say monsters aren't real. Okay, monsters aren't real. Okay, sweetheart. Now go ahead and draw that perp. I know you're six years old. Go ahead and draw that perp again to perfect detail so we can catch this guy. We cut back. The dad is obviously still pissed at the sheriff. So as they're leaving, they have a flashback. Turns out also the guy's Jewish and there's like a really weird anti-Semitic joke about him being like, what is it, my nose? Oh, I light the candles eight nights a year. You're Jewish. Was it the nose? Could you tell that I'm Jewish from these big, big fucking schnoz of mine? I thought that was, I thought that was a bit weird. Where it's just like, hey, no, I just, you know, I don't know. I just put two and two together. He's like, I bet it's his big fucking nose of mine. It, hey, follow your nose. Am I two K and Sam? I might be. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if any of these are landing. Okay. Um, <laughs> and as the scenes transition, we get one shot of an old man taking a swig from a whiskey glass, which I think they're trying to set up that somebody is watching them, but there's no other previous shot to show that like Sydney is being watched. So it just, it just cuts to the interior of this man's truck and he's just drinking and then we just leave. So we're like, what? Who is that? But it doesn't matter because now we're having fun. Sydney and her dad are doing probably one of the cringiest montages of people facing Making, having fun and putting up decorations and it's so painfully quiet we'll have to play some of the clips here but just them kind of like being like oh cool <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, 
Come here, give me that. Give me that. It feels like a, I think you should leave sketch in real time. That's kind of what it feels like, which immediately they do rock, paper, scissors to see who has to take out the trash. Uh-oh, Sydney has to take out the trash. And oops, her dad dies. And we have one of the most jarring edits where I couldn't really tell if it was a dream because she finds her dad and then we cut and she's in a hospital with blood on her hands and she's screaming. And the narrator's like, Sydney had horrible nightmares of blood on her hands. Cindy's nightmares continued about the blood and the beast. If she hadn't lost her mind, she's misplaced it at least. And you're like, oh, so this is her like thinking that she's gone crazy. And it's like, oh no, li literally the next day she's just still in the hospital. And it's like, so was she, how long she been in there? Cause they kind of just let her out, which is weird because of every character in the movie so far has been like, yeah, Sydney, she's fucking crazy. It's like Michael Myers. It's like a young kid kills a family member, comes back and kills more people. It kind of reads like that to where it's, I feel like they would be more alarmed. Like, oh, well this person has been around. Their mom died. Now they coincidentally come back and then now their dad is dead. I guess we'll just let her go. Mayor McBean shows up and she gives Sydney some flowers and she's like, hey, nice to see you're awake, psycho. And she's like, I'm not a psychopath. The monster's out there, please. And then uh, basically the Christmas killer's back. You know, we get some of that stuff. The voice narrator says something again. It's so, I can't fucking remember. It's like, it's just so fucking bad. The last of her love had been stolen away. Evening with the boys does not make you gay. Sydney is taken home by the deputy, and you can definitely tell that the deputy, I mean, his dick is rubbing against the zipper of those pants real bad. I mean, he is, he is bricked the fuck up. She's like, I'm not crazy. I saw a green monster head fur, okay? He's also like, I think he's super new to the force too. And she, he's just like, I don't care. I want some crazy head. I want some crazy lady pussy, like bad. Did I mention I'm Jewish? Proudly Jewish. The mayor goes to the sheriff to tell him that they can't go through another Christmas killer thing again. It's bad for the MO in this small town. We can't keep having all these Christmas killers, sheriff. I'm a 33 millennial mayor, all right? I got to get, I have to get reelected my entire life. I get paid $12,000 a year to be mayor of this town. And she does like a very sassy Karen thing as she walks away. She's like, okay, sweetie, all right. You can tell that, I don't know. She's a bitch. We cut to Sydney's house where she's inside cleaning her dad's blood off the floor, which I need to, we'll do a fact check now, but I'm almost positive that like the forensics keeps it there to take photos, but I'm pretty sure someone like cleans it up. Like they get someone to come and clean it up the for you. I don't think they're like, that's a, that's a bummer. There's the blood. We shouldn't have left it that long, but we did. Sorry, man, for real. But Sydney luckily says, I'm tired of cleaning daddy's blood. I want to go for a hike. She goes up to the hike of the mountain and she starts drinking some of the Jewish tea that the deputy gave her and she looks like she's really content. It kind of almost, she's like, has the composure that she's just like, I'm totally fine with my dad being dead. But luckily enough, while she's taking some pictures of people kissing under a mistletoe on the mountain, like that's a weird place to do it, but okay. There's the Grinch and he starts attacking them with his claws. And we get one of the funniest scenes of the movie where Sydney runs up the hill, turns around and there's the Grinch's face. They're definitely doing a Jim Carrey Grinch. It's becoming very, very clear. And then we get the funniest, probably the funniest scene of the movie where she takes a bunch of rocks and she's throwing it at the Grinch and she's hitting him every time in the face. And she just keeps screaming, you're real. <laughs> And I don't know, I don't know if this is supposed to be funny. You would think like maybe after one, you kind of cut it quits, maybe two. So many rocks are thrown. It's a, it's an obnoxious amount of rocks. So the Grinch runs off. The paramedics are there now. Sydney's in a big hissy because she saw the thing she saw when she was six years old. She's definitely not insane. She definitely didn't go up to the hills and assault these people. I promise you. But you know, the paramedics are like, who did this to you? She's like, well, I don't know. My glasses fell off. I couldn't get a good look at them. Which is like, I'm pretty sure even if you had your glasses off, you could see a giant green fur man in a red Santa Claus suit. It might be blurry, but you'd probably be like, it was like a red Santa Claus suit with a fur guy, whatever. That's just what I would think. Sydney shows the sheriff some blur pictures of the Grinch's cock and the sheriff says, this is a federal land. So it's out of our jurisdiction, which it's pretty funny. He's like, what the heck is this? What is this Sasquatch? What is this? Uh, he says something else. He's like, is this a cowboy? Hellboy? Bigfoot? Pretty sure he says this is a cowboy. And I'm like, what? No, it's just, 
monster. Look at it. Sydney puts up flyers of blurry images, which is just stupid. I mean, like when you look at the flyers, it's like, have you seen this man? Green fur and claws. And it's a, the blurriest compressed fucking JPEG you've ever seen in your life. And that's when we cut to, which once again, the edit makes it look like we're cutting back or like it's like a flashback, but no, we're just cutting to a group of Santa Clauses on a party bus who are driving into town. But the the edit makes it look like a flashback. It's, it's so fucking weird. The group of uh, Santa Clauses that are in something called SantaCon, Jesus Christ, roll up to a bar and they're all gonna, you know, get sloshed up. And it's cute and hilarious when one of them tries skipping about assaulting the waitress. Really funny. Because usually when horror movies do this, they're setting it up to where the bad guy gets his comeuppings. He slips off to the back while he, all of his friends are laughing. And I think that he's gonna go grape the waitress. And she just elbows him in the face and she just, hm, sorry. And it's like, wasn't he about to just like skip it about salt you? I feel like it would be, you should probably be a little more. I don't know, not as like, I'm a bad bitch. You know, I would be like, I'm gonna kill you with a fucking frying pan. But luckily the Grinch comes in and we really get to see this guy, whoever the Grinch actor is. He really, he has a little candy cane. He's doing a twirl and he uh, bashes a, one of the Santa's heads in. He's being you know, a very Jim Carrey here and all hell breaks loose. I mean, he's beating people up. It's total pandemonium in the bar, which you wouldn't really know because there's no music really at all. So it feels very silent and like, I feel like they just forgot to add sound effects in. Like it feels so empty. There is a funny part though, where it's a, it's a, once again, a terrible edit, but the Grinch jumps up and he immediately lands down and it's just like a wig that has like some cherry pie filling on the floor. Uh, that was pretty funny. He stabs an inflatable tree, puts someone in a meat grinder and he just beats the shit out of people. So the girl, the waitress who hit the guy on the head, the Grinch like drug his body into the freezer and she went in after him and got locked in the whole time. But after the whole Grinch murder fest, the freezer door just like, randomly opens and she's able to walk out and see how crazy this bad Santa con, which also I don't know why they had to make the Santa con people just like, I don't know. It's like, it, it felt like a biker gang, like a movie. You know what I mean? Like when it's like, oh, the biker gang comes in, they're like, we're not paying for anything. Fucker. You know, go get us a beer. Ha ha ha, you sweet tits. Yeah. Let me, let me see that pussy. I want to see that Cyclops eye between your legs. Ha ha ha. They were just people dressed up as Santa. Just felt weird, it, whatever. Also in this movie, they reused the same B-roll of like clouds passing by the moon, but it's on like 12 frames a second. It looks really like maybe even eight frames. I mean, it looks like really jagged. Like almost like the render got fucked up, but they keep reusing it. It's gonna make me laugh a little bit. At Sydney's house, the Grinch comes and turns our lights off. The someone breaks in and it turns out it's not the Grinch. It's the old man who was drinking the whiskey in the truck. Remember him from a while ago? You don't? I barely did too. Sydney uh, punches him in the face and he does like a creepy line. He's like, you gotta punch harder than that if you're gonna beat up the Grinch. You're gonna have to learn to hit harder than that. It's like, okay, what? <laughs> uh, they go to Horton's to get a drink. You just kind of see what's happening. By now we're like, oh God, he's gonna keep putting in all of these Dr. Seuss references. McBean, Hortons, it gets so much worse. The local whiskey fat old man drunk shows a drawing to Sydney, which looks like, looks like a pencil drawing that a third grader would do at school, which is fine because it's not he's a professional artist, but it's just funny because he like, he just carries around with him. What does that monster look like? Well, let me show you. And he pulls out this drawing. And then she's like, well, what am I seeing? What's his name? And he's like, they call him the Grinch. And as he says it, the waitress or the bartender is like, Fitch! Order from Mike Fitch! It's a really clever way to get around copyright. But then the drunk guy is like, But to me, he's just the mean one. Wink! Wink! It's the name of the movie! We get exposition about the lumberjack, how the mean one hates anything Christmas, how he doesn't like the mean one because his wife was mailing. This is kind of funny. This is like just such a stupid backstory. He's like, my wife was mailing Christmas packages to our cousin in Florida. It's like, okay. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Our cousin in Florida. So we had to mail him the gifts because he lives in Florida. And when she was doing that, oh, the Grinch cut off her head. So I hate that mean old Grinch. I hate him. <laughs> Which, yeah, you know, I don't blame him. I'd hate him too, but 
Yeah. But now she's like, we should go and tell the police officer about this. They go back to the police station and basically the sheriff is like, listen, Sydney, you dumb bitch. That's a local drunk. Please, for the love of God, leave me alone. She's like, I'm not going to. And even the deputy who wants to fuck her real bad, he's like, I mean, come on, sheriff. She has another eyewitness here. So Sydney keeps manipulating and gaslighting him, really promising her strange to him. She's like, so I guess you're not going to do anything, I guess. He's like, well, I mean, it's out of my jurisdiction, but I'll see what I can do. So we cut to the next scene of him going up into the hills and he just very easily finds the Grinch's cave and there's just wallets everywhere on the ground. <laughs> like he's picking them up like a little bread trail or something like that. There's a sheet over something. He lifts it up. It's a dead body. The Grinch comes in. He has a really mishap with this little toy and it's a big spooky scene. He leaves the cave after seeing this dead body, the Grinch doing his Jim Carrey impressions and he runs into the drunk guy who has a gun or he's getting ready to go into the cave and I guess kill the Grinch and he's like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? And then he doesn't immediately just say, oh my God, I just saw a dead body. They have like a weird back and forth. And then the drunk guy's just like, well, I guess yes, you just saw what the mean one's about. And he just gets in his car and a bunch of like very clearly like recycled bottles just kind of fall out of his car to once again reassure you that he's a drunk. It's like, we already have that. But they don't go in and do anything. They both have guns. Don't shoot him. He's right there. Whatever. Oh yeah. And that's also when we find out that his name, the, the drunk guy's name, the drunk guy's name is Zeus. But people just call him Doc. People just call him Doc. Dr. Seuss, do you get it? Matthias Seuss. Seuss? Well, everybody calls me Doc. Holy shit, it's so stupid. Oh my God. So the deputy and Sydney meet up and he tells her that I think something is going on. Even though he's, you saw a dead body. Yeah, no shit, you know something's going on. I think something weird's going on. It's like, didn't you just see a fucking, a decaying body and a bunch of fucking weird wallets in a cave? Yeah, no shit, dude. Go back to your boss. Holy shit. Sydney takes a shower and the deputy comes in and starts fucking her, uh, but they both get hit by the Grinch again or get attacked by him once again just propping up another like dream sequence it's like it feels like it's doing a callback to like nightmare on elm street or something and it has it's, it's giving that vibe and also to put just to say this as well it feels like the grinch is trying to do like an art the clown thing from terrifier but without any of the actual gore or any of the charisma from the actor and like the ambiance of music it falls so flat and it just seems like somebody doing like a hollywood walk of fame jim carrey grinch impression and it's really fucking stupid and that's another problem too with this film is just like no so far all of these kills you don't see any of it it just cuts to like off screen bam and then like the result of the death afterwards which is just the worst it's, it's the worst when you do that in a slasher dude but luckily it was just a dream she wakes up and the narrator starts being like she can't tell the dreams from reality nightmares made it hard to know what's real and what's fake and it just feels like no shit dude i just saw that like, are you trying to say us? Are you trying to say that, like, we can't start to discern that from reality? Are we doing, like, a weird dream seek? Like, is this real? I don't know. It, it was just confusing. We get a cringe montage of she's going to train to beat the Grinch, like a fighting sequence, like a Rocky training sequence, which it all goes along with, like, remember those, like, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, like, rock? <laughs> they put that in the background, kind of, but to not use copyright either, they only use, like, a couple of the chord progressions, and then they're just like, this kind of sounds like holiday music. As she learns kung fu and how to shoot a gun really well in this montage, which there's no perception of time. So you have to assume that it's all in one day. So she did this in about like probably four to six hours. Pretty sweet training session. Doc grabs a bottle of Giesel, Giesel, Giesel? Geisel whiskey and really is sure to turn the bottle around so you know what it is. Which if you don't know, that's Dr. Seuss's actual last name. These Easter eggs are so sick. Oh God. Doc leaves and he gets arrested for drunk driving, but we cut to a diner and at the diner, it's called Egg Heaven. It's in green and font. Green eggs and ham. Have you ever heard of that? Inside the diner owner is mad because he got jingle bells in the mail and not the bell peppers that he ordered. Which why a food company would get that mixed up. I don't really know, but it happened. And because of that, you know, the, the Grinch gets mad because there's some Christmas stuff and we get another death. He hacks away at his body, but it's like spirit Halloween prosthetics and they're already cut. So he's just like slamming down on already cut objects. And it's, it just looks very obvious. Just 
it was bad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just to tell you. Which also, uh, they're trying to incorporate some of Jim Carrey-isms from the Grinch. They keep trying to do that in there, and it just doesn't work. One, because, like, he's so quiet. The only thing that you ever hear from the Grinch is, is he just does... <laughs> <laughs> So you can get one giggle for ten dollars. <laughs> there you go. Which I does. I guess the Grinch does that in the original film. I don't know. We cut back to the doc getting thrown in the drunk tank, and he starts spatting at the sheriff. He's like, "I'm trying to help you get rid of a monster." The sheriff walks away, and he gets in an argument with the mayor. Which that's when you find out that the mayor was once her deputy. She was a deputy to him at one point, and they know some kind of dark secret. And I think that this is when they reveal that they know there's a monster in town, which is very parallel to Willy's Wonderland and that sheriff too. So it feels like just kind of like, oh well, they did that, so I guess we will too. But at least in this movie, the mayor says an extremely cringy line. She says, If I burn, I'm pulling you into the pyre. Sick. Sydney's sitting there contemplating how she's gonna beat the Grinch from the drawing she got from the doc, looking at his chest, and she's like, Are his shoes too tight? Hmm. His heart is probably two times too small. By this point in the film, they are really committing extremely hard to making Sydney look like prime Ronda Rousey. Looks just like her. They're like, that's how the viewer knows that she's a fucking bad bitch now, for real. And the deputy comes in with his laptop talking to Ronda Rousey, and he's just like, listen, I cross-checked these walls I found in the cave, and all of them are hikers. Which, it's all like photoshopped images, and he looks on their Facebooks, and there's just the Grinch photoshopped in the background of each one of them. And it's like, because this town which is called Newsville instead of Whosville, oh god, has a website that's like, come hike here, and the domain is owned by the mayor. And he's like, the mayor's in on it. She wants people to go up to the mountains to get killed by the Grinch so he doesn't come down here, I guess? Which, I thought that it would, he only prized on people who do Christmas stuff, so she's saying in the website, like, go do Christmas stuff up in the mountains or whatever. It once again feels like a parallel between Willy's Wonderland, where it's like, oh, go clean up the pizzeria. But at least in Willy's Wonderland, Wonderland, it's like, it's to feed them so they don't break out and kill other people. It doesn't have like a Christmas correlation thing of whatever. The deputy who still wants to have sex with Sydney, extremely bad, finds out that she has some guns upstairs and it's a full on assault rifle. And he grabs like this like red ornament and she's like, oh, don't touch that. So you have to assume that's a, a bomb. And there's like an extremely childish, like red thread connection, like conspiracy board on the wall. And he's like, I don't want you getting hurt. I was trying to impress you. Please, I want to eat your pussy so bad. And she's like, <laughs> maybe. Go kill the Grinch and we'll talk. We cut to the mayor. Her car breaks down. Uh-oh, the Grinch is there. And he strangles her with some of her sticker ribbons, which it's like, if you've ever had one of the sticker ribbons, the paper is so thin that I was like, how is it that strong to pull a whole body back? But anyways, he props up her head in the trunk of the car. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's going to be like a head smash scene. But instead, this like Toyota Prius trunk door just cuts off her head. And then we get a headless prop with one of her stickers on her mouth. It's so boring. <sighs> Where are we even at, dude? The sheriff, or the deputy confronts the sheriff that... Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. And the sheriff basically is like, you know, oh, these killings happen every time, uh, every Christmas. We get a really stupid fucking flashback of the sheriff, like, walking up and seeing somebody named Stephanie. He's like, Stephanie, Stephanie. Stephanie! Kind of sounds like Chris Chan when he's, when he's beating off saying Julie, whatever, in that, in that one video. <laughs> Julie! Don't put that on the screen. Julie! We found out that the sheriff and mayor have been trying to save the town by feeding people to it. It's once again, it's, it's Willie Swan! Wonderland! It's exactly Willy's Wonderland. It's so stupid. Cut to Sydney and she does like 12 different poses in front of the window. It's actually pretty funny. She's like looking at the window. She does another pose. She does one more. She does a fucking roll to get her knife. It's like, dude, just walk to the fucking knife, you extra bitch. Good lord. Turns out that one of her traps that she set off went off and it's Doc. Uh-oh, he's hanging upside down. He's like, I saw your boyfriend up there going to the mountain to kill the Grinch. And then it has like this weird moment where she's like, like, oh my god, did he say that we were a boyfriend and girlfriend? It's it's one of those things where I'm like, what is this movie? Are you trying to be cutesy and funny or is it are you trying to be a horror film? Stay in your lane! My god! The deputy goes up to kill the Grinch. The deputy is singing like Christmas songs, but doesn't know him because he's Jewish. And he does, you know, some funny renditions of that until he just sings the dreidel song, which that's when we hear the Grinch. And if we can ever hear the Grinch in this movie, I'm pretty sure they just use stock bear sounds. So it just sounds like. <laughs> It'd be really scary if it was just Jim Carrey sound bites. Somebody stop me! <laughs> 
But the deputy gets his leg stuck in a bear trap. Ooh, the Grinch has a mistletoe and does a kissy face to him. Very, very funny. And then uh, he gets lit up by the sheriff and then runs off. The sheriff like shoots him like four times. And he's just like, Rrr! and it looks like it doesn't really affect him. But the amount of blood that comes out of his mouth, I'm like, this creature is dying right now. But no, he just runs off. The sheriff basically opens up the bear trap. He's just like, you'll be fine, kid. I'm going to go kill this Grinch. He starts seeing Christmas carols as well. And they try doing a Saul, a Saul shout out. Kind of like the scene in the first Saul movie where the guy takes a picture to illuminate the dark room. He does that with a gun, except it's just like, it looks like uh, that in, I'm doing a lot of references right now because I really want to piece together how I'm, uh, how I'm absorbing this film. So he he's shooting in this cave to light up the room like in Saul, but the Grinch is dodging the bullets kind of like the emperor fight scene at the end of Chronicles of the Riddick. If you've ever seen that movie before in your life, the way he's moving. Needless to say, the sheriff dies. Uh-oh. And once again, they meet right outside outside the cave. Every time we go outside the cave, they're always just right out front, which makes me think that like they could only shoot in a certain vicinity outside. They couldn't show too much of the forest because there was like, I don't know, corporate buildings or something like right there. They're immediately right there and they're just like, we got to get the hell out of here. So they drop off the Jewish guy who basically tells Sydney, he's like, it has to be you, baby. Please, for the love of God, let me lick the tip. Please, Rhonda. Take me to prom, Rhonda. Sydney goes back and she is luring the Grinch in. She turns on all of her Christmas lights and now it's real, dude. She says, it's time to roast this beast. Time to roast this beast. The Grinch carved the roast beast. <laughs> We cut to her in her house. She's sleeping. The Grinch sneaks in. She says some fucking cringe line and kicks him in the chest. And then that's when the Grinch like turns around and there's two laser pointers and he's getting sniped and the doc is shooting him, but there's no laser sight on his gun. He just is just shooting him. They can't find him. And Sydney has all of her guns are Christmas themed. Like she has like a candy cane shotgun. Which if this was like a cheesy, fun, schlocky action movie, maybe that could be fun. But here it's just like, you took time to paint that. It just feels weird. The doc ends up getting attacked. Also the, the Grinch gets shot like six times again. He's been just getting lit the fuck up. I mean, he's borderline immortal. Invincible here, okay? The Grinch attacks Doc, which is kind of funny. He does like, please, no! Please, please, don't do this, no! No! Sydney tries to attack him again, tries shooting him, but the Grinch does meh and runs off. Doc scolds Sydney. He's like, Rhonda, get the, your ass back inside and stick to the fucking plan. We go back inside. The Grinch and Sydney have the douchiest action scene of all time. They do like a little punching scuffle. Like it's like a weird whatever. She takes that globe that we saw earlier and throws it in his face and it explodes. She then lifts up a rug in our living room and then lights, I'm guessing like Christmas decorations that lead to the Christmas tree and it explodes. She has had her tree rigged to explode. I don't know. I just I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, after this, Sydney jumps on top of the Grinch. She's getting ready to stab him until she sees that he still has the necklace that she gave him at the beginning of the movie. And she's like, you get this? And he's like... Mm -hmm. And then uh, she forgives him because towards the middle of the movie, or whenever the Jewish guy meets up with him, or... Whenever the deputy is talking to her the first time, he's like, you gotta learn to forgive. So then she just lets him forgive, but by doing so, his heart gets two sizes too big and it explodes and he says, go away, run. <laughs> Go! He does like a scene from the Hurt Locker and rolls himself over and fucking explodes. So she won't die. So then the Grinch dies. And then it cuts to like some weird stock footage commercials where it's like, oh, is this creature real? Like the world knows about the Grinch now. And it brings all of this tourist traffic to Newsville. Basically the movie ends where it's like, oh, you brought all this infrastructure even though the Grinch is dead. People want to go hiking and hopefully see the Grinch. And then the deputy and Ronda Rousey make out. And then the narrator is like, Oh, all is well until next year. But it's like, is there more than one Grinch? And so ends our story with holiday cheer. And they all lived happily ever after, at least till next year. <laughs> so I'm guessing they're going to set up for multiple Grinches. Or, or did the Grinch survive, but he's still mad, even though he tried saving Sydney there? It doesn't make any fucking sense. And also, if I was Doc, I'd be fucking mad that Sydney didn't stab him in the fucking face three times. And also, just because the Grinch, like, people were mean to him or called him a monster, it doesn't give him the right to go and murder, like, I, I mean, how many fucking people? Like, over 20 people? Oh, someone called you ugly, dude. Big fucking deal. It's like trying to be like, oh, well, you know, people were rude to him first. It's like, no, 
know. It doesn't justify anything. They should have just fucking put this animal down because it's rabid. It's absolutely fucking rabid. But lo and behold, this movie, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I would not recommend it. I would, not even as a funny watch. This is a warning to anybody. Please do not watch this movie. It is, it's, it, it, it wasn't even like, oh God, it just, it's so boring. So unbelievably boring. If you're gonna watch a Christmas horror movie, watch Krampus. Krampus fucking rules. Can we say that? I'm gonna say that. I wanna put that out there. Krampus fucking rules. So does, J I mean, Jack Frost is kind of shitty, but at least it's fun. That's a fun Christmas horror film. The beginning scene to Silent Night, Deadly Night is awesome. We should play a little bit of it here. Whoa! <laughs> That's the peak of the movie, though. So if you think the whole thing is like that, it's not. I'm just gonna put that out there. But anyways, that's the mean one. The new Christmas horror movie for this year. So just wanted to sit down and talk about it and let you know to please avoid it if you can. Run away from it. It's not good. Watch Krampus. Krampus is a good one. I'd even recommend Ginger Dead Man over this movie. I don't think that movie is like awesome, but you know. Gary Busey voices the cookie. Do I need to say more, <laughs> right? But that's all I got for you today. See you in the next one.